Hi, I'm Paul, a contractor. My company uses National Estimator to work up estimates and bids for most of our jobs. National Estimator has thousands of labor and material costs for the type of work we handle. I'll show you. Each of these cost books has about 500 pages of current construction costs, all neatly organized and indexed. I'll open the construction cost book. I use these costs to build estimates and bids. All my work is kept secure on the web. I can open any of my estimates no matter where I am and no matter the computer or cell phone I'm using. There's plenty to like about National Estimator. My cost for National Estimator is only a few dollars a month. I can cancel any time I want. I can print bids and invoices in MS Word, Excel, or Postscript. Invoices export to QuickBooks, either desktop or online. My bids and invoices can show as much or as little detail as I want. National Estimator does progress invoices, so I can send a bill for each part of the job as work gets done. I'll show you how it works. We've got a concrete driveway job coming up. I'll make a little bid for this job. I could page through the whole book to find the labor and material costs I need, but there's a better way. I'll click the index icon. This slab starts with a 4-inch crushed stone base, so I'll search for Slab Base and press Enter. Here's what I want. We're ready to start building the estimate. I'll click Create New and put a name on this estimate. I'll click on the info icon to get a suggestion on naming this estimate. Okay, we'll call this the Hill Street Job. With National Estimator, your estimates are stored securely on the web. There's no need to save estimates. Every keystroke is saved when it happens. Okay, the Hill Street job is open. Notice the job title. Here's the line I want to copy to our estimate. I'll right-click to see my options. I want to add this to the end of my estimate. Notice the cursor in the quantity box. I'll use the calculator to figure the total area. This slab is 27 feet long by 29 feet wide. Okay, our quantity is 783 square feet. I'll press tab and check the estimate. This column shows estimates per unit for each square foot. The column over here has extended figures for 783 square feet. These lines explain what's getting installed. You can change anything you want. Just click and start typing. For example, I could type a different hourly wage. If I change the wage rate for craft code BL, the rate I type will be used for a building laborer throughout this estimate. It looks fine to me, so I'll click Save. There, how's that? Notice that the estimate now has totals. Let's add some overhead and profit to this job. I'll click the Markup button. I'll type percentages for overhead and profit. Let's enter 15% for overhead and press tab four times to advance to profit. And we'll enter 10% for profit. That looks okay. I'll click Save. How's that? It looks okay to me. I have to pay tax on materials for this job. National Estimator cost books don't include tax. So let's add some tax. I'll click on the tax icon. Tax at the job site is eight and a quarter percent. And click save. Now we've got tax in this estimate. That looks okay to me, but you can change anything you want. To change overhead or profit, click the markup icon. To change tax, click the tax icon. To change any cost, double click on the line. To change any words, just click the text line and start typing. If you right click, you can see the options to insert a new text line, cost line, or subtotal. I'm sure you're getting the idea. You've got thousands of pages of cost estimates in the cost books. Click the index icon to find what you want. Then, copy and paste to your estimate. Let's put a few more costs in this estimate. I'll start with the concrete pump for this job. All we need for this job is a trailer mounted pump. This is what I want. I'll select it. And right click to copy to the end of my estimate. The slab area is 783 square feet, but the costs here are per cubic yard. 
So I'll open the calculator and convert 783 square feet of 6 inch slab to cubic feet and then to cubic yards. I'll divide 783 by 2 to find the cubic feet. Okay, there are 391 cubic feet in this 6 inch slab. I'll divide by 27 to find the cubic yards. We'll need 14 and a half cubic yards of concrete. I'll press tab and check the numbers. The material cost and equipment cost look okay, but this labor cost looks a little light to me. I usually figure about one quarter man hour to place each cubic yard, so I'll bump the man hours up to a quarter hour per yard. And press enter. That looks better. I'm done here. That's about all you have to know to get started. Of course, there's lots more to learn. If you get stuck, reach out to Craftsman Tech Support and they are happy to help. You can use the chat feature on the website or give them a ring at 760-438-7828, extension 2, Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Pacific Time. Let's keep going with this Hill Street job. Demolition of the existing driveway will be done by a sub. My demo sub bid 3500 to break out the existing driveway, excavate to 10 inches below finish grade, and remove the spoil. I'm going to add the sub's bid to my estimate. I'll right-click here where I want to insert the sub bid, and click to insert the work description. You can add anything to an estimate, even if it's not in the Craftsman cost books. Subcontractors are a good example. Okay, that looks about right. Now let's add the contractor's 3500 sub bid. I'll click where I want the demo costs and right click to add a cost line. The quantity is one, a single sub bid. The unit of measure is each. I'll press tab to see how it looks. Looks okay. So I'll click save to paste to my estimate. Now we've got the sub bid. I haven't figured the edge forms yet. We'll have to set 27 feet of 2x8 edge form on each side of the slab. So I'll open the index and find some edge forms. This is what I want. I'll right click and select copy. Now I'll click in the estimate where I want these costs pasted. Now I have to figure the cost. Each side of this driveway needs 27 linear feet of form. That's right, 54 linear feet of 2 by 8 form. I'll press tab and check the cost. This is about right, so I'll click save. That looks okay. We'll have to strip and clean these forms. I'll scroll down and find some costs. Here's what we want. I'll right click to copy. I'll click where I want to paste and then paste. The quantity is 54. That takes care of prep for the slab. I'm going to click here and right click to put a subtotal in the estimate. Subtotals make estimates easier to check and understand, but that's not all. When this estimate is done, I'm going to turn it into a bid. When we get the job, I'll convert this estimate into an invoice. Estimates have to show every cost. Bids and invoices don't. It's enough to list charges by job phase. That's why I give each job phase a subtotal in my estimate. I'll show how this works a little later. Okay, we've got a subtotal in the Hill Street estimate. Now, let's add the cost of slab finishing. This slab gets a steel trowel finish. And then, we're going to score the surface by hand. I'll hold the control key down and click the second line. Now, let's add these to the estimate. These costs can go at the end of the estimate. We know the slab surface is 783 square feet. I'll press tab to be sure it's right. Looks okay. So I'll save this to the estimate. We'll score this slab the 27 foot length twice and the 29 foot width twice. I'll press tab to check the scoring cost. That's about right. I'll save these costs to the estimate. We're almost done. The last item is reinforcing steel. The owner wants number 4 rebars 18 inches on center both ways. I could pull these costs out of a cost book, but I estimated a job like that a while ago in the desktop version of National Estimator, the Spring Street job. 
I'll import the estimate I did for that job and paste rebar costs into this estimate. The information icon here explains how to import the file. I'll select the file. This is the file I want. And I'll click to import. OK, here's the estimate. I'll drag the slide bar down to find rebars. Here are the rebars. I'll select and click to copy. And then go back to our Hill Street job. I'll click where these costs belong and select Paste After. OK, we've got an estimate for the steel. But the quantity is wrong. The slab on the Spring Street job was 1,235 square feet. This slab is only 783 square feet. Let's make the change. I'll double click on that line to open the Cost Row Editor. I'll type the quantity 783 and click Save. That looks OK. We're done, but let me run through these buttons at the top of the page before we print the estimate. New Estimate. Open an existing estimate. Print. Cut. Copy. Paste. Insert and Delete. The percent icon lets you change any cost category by a percentage, material, labor, equipment, or subcontract. I'm not going to make any percent changes on this job. Here's the markup button. We've already got markup in this estimate. Tax at this job is eight and a quarter percent. If you pay tax on materials, remember to add tax to your estimate. National Estimator cost books don't include tax. Tax shows up right here just above the grand total, but below the estimate total. I like to put customer info on our estimates. Here's where I do that. The customer name and address will show up in the estimate and in QuickBooks if you let QuickBooks do the invoicing. I use this to adjust costs to the construction site. The information icon explains what happens here. I've clicked all three boxes because I want all estimates in the cost books modified by these percentages. The last three icons are easy. This one double spaces the estimate, makes it easier to read. See the difference? This one shows unit costs. On an insurance job, the adjuster will probably want to see unit costs in your estimate. Notice the unit costs. The last icon hides material and labor costs. Notice the difference? All you see are total costs. These are the undo and redo buttons. Click here to undo the last action. Click here to reverse out the last undo. Remember me saying that every keystroke is saved as soon as it's made? You can delete an estimate anytime you want, but you can't abandon changes in an estimate. Instead, click Undo as many times as needed to reverse out changes. When I need an alternate bid with a different scope of work, I use Save As to create a second version of the estimate under a different file name. No need for an alternate bid on this job. OK, let's print the Hill Street estimate. I've got some format choices here. If I wanted to insert pictures or drawings in this estimate, I'd select Word Format. I'll click here to download as a PDF. In a few seconds, the estimate will be in my Downloads folder. I'll click to have a look at the estimate. I've got the company name and logo at the top of the estimate. I'll explain how to do that and how to add more info about the job. My company name, the customer name, and the job name are under the Tools menu. I'll click the Main Menu icon and show the options. This is where I filled in info about our customer, our company, and the job. And notice down here, Accounting Settings. If your company sends invoices or tracks cost with QuickBooks, select either QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Desktop. National Estimator will export to your QuickBooks company. 
My choice for printing bids and invoices is Excel. Here's how I print bids. The info icon explains the options. My bid for the Hill Street job doesn't have to show all the costs and details in my estimate. For this job, I'll show all the work descriptions, but only subtotal costs. And I'll distribute markup and tax throughout the estimate so I don't have to show either in the bid. I could print the bid in Word or Excel, but let's have a look at the bid as a PDF. All the work descriptions are here, but the only costs are subtotals and the estimate total. Here's another choice for printed bids. I'll show all the work detail. But I'm going to show only item totals, no breakdown of labor and material costs. Let's see how that looks. Notice that all the work descriptions are here. But there's no breakdown of labor and material costs. You might like that better. No matter what you show or hide, the bid total will be the same. When it comes time to collect for this job, National Estimator will print the invoice. Again, my invoice doesn't have to show every detail in the estimate. I'm going to leave these options alone. You could export the invoice to QuickBooks if that's your choice. But I'm going to create this invoice in Excel. And it's going to be a progress invoice. Here's where I check off what was done each pay period. Our invoice will cover work done that week. If demolition and excavation are 100% done, I'll click 100%. Slab base will be 100% done. Edge forms will be 100% done. Placing rebar should be about 50% done. Let's have a look at the invoice. These lines explain to our customer what's on the invoice and how the charges were figured. Charges are spelled out for each part of the job. Anything not on this invoice can be billed later. National Estimator keeps track of what's been billed out so far and what hasn't been billed yet. Any part of the job not done yet can be billed on the next progress invoice. If there are extra charges on the job, add those to the original estimate. These will show up as new charges in the next progress invoice at any percent you select. One word of caution. If you make changes in an Excel invoice, be sure to enter formulas where there are totals. The totals in invoices are just numbers, not formulas. There's more to learn. Try it for yourself. With a little practice, National Estimator could be your most useful estimating tool.